Hello and welcome back to another video on Kitchen Slow. Okay, the question says find the current in the 6 ohm resistor and the power in the 4 ohm resistor. Okay, now first thing first, assume your direction clockwise, clockwise, anti clockwise, anti clockwise, or clockwise, anti clockwise. For this question, I'll be using clockwise and anti clockwise. For loop 1, I'm going in a clockwise direction then for loop 2 I'm going in an anti-clockwise direction okay we're going in a clockwise direction we know what it means if you haven't watched my first video on picture of slow please do so to watch I, I, I explain more in details because I'll be skipping some parts in this video so please do watch my first video on picture of slow check the description to access the link to the video okay for this one for this loop one which is a clockwise direction I'm starting from A, then back to B, right? Let's assign polarity to the resistor. A to B, no resistor. Moving on, B to E, I'm having 4 ohm resistor. Then the polarity becomes positive, negative. F to E, no resistor, right? Then for FA, the polarity becomes positive, negative. I'm done with loop 1. Let, let's, call, let's denote the current in loop 1 as I1. Then for loop 2, I'm starting from C, then back to C, since I'm going in an anticlockwise direction. C to B, no resistor. B to E, I'm having a form resistor. The polarity becomes positive, negative. E to D, no resistor. D to C, I'm having a resistor 5 ohms. The polarity becomes positive, negative. Then I'm done assigning polarity to my resistor. Please do well to check the previous video on Ketchup Slope. I explained in details there. Check the, check the description below before going further on this. Okay? Step 2. Step 1. Assign polarities. We've done that. Step 2. Applying KVL to loop 1 and loop 2. Loop 1. Meaning mesh AB EFA. For branch AB, no circuit elements. Branch BE, I'm having 4 ohm resistor for the loop 1. 4 ohm resistor in what direction? Positive to negative. If I'm going from positive to negative, there's a voltage gain, right? Meaning positive 4 I1. For 4 ohm resistor is in between loop 1 and loop 2. Also, I've done for loop 1. For loop 2, the polarity is in if the polarity is moving from positive to negative, meaning there's a voltage gain as well. So positive for I2, right? Not forgetting that you are in loop one. Moving on, Fe, no circuit element. Fa, you have a circuit element of six ohm resistor. Moving from polarity of positive to negative. From positive to negative, there's a voltage gain as well. Then you have positive six I1, equating that to zero. Since KVL says that the algebraic sum of voltage in a closed loop is equal to zero. So therefore, collect like 10. 10 I1 plus 4 I2. That's equals to zero. And call this equation one. Equation two. Okay, step three. Loop. Loop two. Mesh B. Okay. In this case, Let's follow the order in which we assign direction, in which we assign the direction of the current. We, we assign an anticlockwise direction, meaning we are starting from C back to C. Then the mesh becomes CB, CBEDC, right? Mesh CBEDC. Okay? From C to B, no register. B to E, I'm having a resistor 4 ohms in between loop 1 and loop 2. Meaning that 4 ohms will be considered in loop 1 and 4 ohms will be considered in loop 2. 4 ohms for loop 2, positive to negative. Moving from positive to negative, there will be a voltage gain, right? Meaning I'm having positive 4 I2, 4 ohm resistor in loop 2. I'm having this. 4 ohm resistor in loop 1, positive to negative, voltage gain. The current in loop 1 is I1. Then I have this, right? Not forgetting that I'm in loop 2. I'm considering loop 2. 
Okay? E to D, no register. Moving on. D, D back to C. I'm having a 5 ohm register. The polarity, positive, negative. If you are moving from positive to negative, what do you have? Voltage gain. Positive 5I2. Then your current, your voltage, negative to positive. From negative to positive, there is a voltage drop. Meaning negative 40 equal 0. Collect like 10. From here, you have 4I1 plus 9I2 is equals to is equals to 40. Call this equation 2. Sorry, equation 1 and equation 2 simultaneously. Equation 1. 10I1 plus 4I2 equals 0. Which you can factorize. Observe, 2 is constant, factorize. You have this. Divide both sides by 2. Then you have divide both sides by 2. Then equation 1 can be expressed as this. This is still equation 1. Then equation 2. You have 4i1 plus 9i2 equals to 40. Using simultaneous equation. How do you go about this? Solving with simultaneous equation. Using an elim elimination method. By elimination method, we mean multiply equation 1 by 2, multiply equation 2 by 1. Using the coefficient of I1. Okay? The coefficient of I1 in equation 1 is 5. Meaning, multiply 5 by equation 2. That is, 5 open bracket 4I1 plus 9I2 equals to 40. This is called this equation, called this equation 3. Similarly, the coefficient of i in equation 2 is 4. Multiply 4 all through by equation 1. Then you have 4 open brackets. 5i1 plus 2i2 equals to 0. Call this equation 4. Alright, let's open up the brackets. This gives us 20i1 plus 45i2 equals to 200. Similarly, for equation 4, open up your brackets. I'm having 20i1 plus 8i2 equals to 0. Elimination method. Subtract equation 3 from equation 4. Meaning, 20i1 minus 20i1 plus, open bracket, 45 minus 8i2 equals to 200 minus 0. That's what it means. Meaning that 20 minus 20 cancel out. Then I'm left with 45 minus 8i2 equals to 200. 45 minus 8, which gives me 37 i2 equals to 200. Right? Divide all through by 37. So therefore, i2 is equals to 200 divided by 37. And what's the value? We have 5. 0.4 ampere. Substituting the value of I2 in either equation 1, equation 2, equation 3, or equation 4. Any equation you use, you'll be getting the same answer. Alright, let me go with equation 1. Substituting I2 into equation 1, meaning 5I1 plus 2I2 equals 0. Of course, I have 5I1 plus 2 open bracket 5.4 equals 0. That is 5i1 plus 10.4 equals 0. Make i1 the subject of the formula. It implies that 5i1 is equals to negative 10.4. Divide both sides by 5. So therefore, i1 is equals to, what's the value of i1? Negative 2.162, right? Negative 2.16 ampere. Then, initially, the question asks us to calculate the current in, in 6 ohm resistor. And that's, and that's I1. Since we said the current flowing through this loop to be I1, then the current flowing through this loop, we said I2. We've been using I2. That's I2, okay, meaning this direction. Then, observe. Applying, applying KCL to junction B, 
applying KCL to junction B or to node B, you observe that both I1 and I2 they are entering junction B. Let's call the current by the time both of them enters. Let's call the current I3, meaning that I1 plus I3 is equals to sorry, I1 plus I2 is equals to I3. So therefore, I3 is equals to what the value of I1? Negative 2.16 plus I2 5.4. Then this gives us this gives us 3.24 ampere. 5.4 ampere. I3 is equals to 3.24 ampere. Now let's answer the question. Meaning I1, which is the current flowing through 6 ohm resistor, is 2.162 ampere. But observe the the value, the current, we are having negative to be the current, which is not meant to be so. What, is, what this is telling us is that the axial direction of the current is not correct. That's not the actual direction. That is, the, axial, the direction we assume was clockwise, meaning the actual direction is anticlockwise and not clockwise. So therefore, I1 is equals to 2.162 ampere in brackets anti anti clockwise that's what it means so that's why it works then question two the power in form resistor we call power is equals to i square r so therefore the power in four ohm resistor what is the current in form resistor? That's I3. And we got that to be 3.24. Meaning 3.24 square times 4. And this gives me 41.99 watts. Approximately 42 watts. So that's the same principle for any question given to you under Kirchhoff's law. Apply KVA, apply KCA, assign polarities to your resistor, and you are good to go. Then when you, when you want to solve your equation, either use simultaneous equation or use the Kramer shoe, meaning matrix method. All right, this comes to the end of Kirchhoff's law. In my next video, I'll be using the finished theorem to solve question one and question two which we've done under Kirchhoff's law. See you in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Also, share your thoughts in the comment section. Bye.